What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Only Farts. I'm your host, Brad Stoll. Thank you. Welcome back. A couple plugs up top, as you all know. Uh, if you like me, go follow me at Damn It Brad on Instagram, at Chef Asshole as well. If you like the TikTok, you're one of the kids, part of the TikTok army. Join me at Damn It underscore Brad. Appreciate it. I don't know if we're on iTunes, and if we are, great. If we're not, come to the YouTube, Brad Stoll Comedy. You can find the video versions as you're possibly watching right now. Uh, you can find some sketches and stuff. So- well, there's your sketches on there. Not right now, but there will be. Subscribe to that. A lot of cool, crazy content. And as always, join the Patreon, patreon.com slash only farts. Oh, God, I just ate a pizza. Well, I ate a broccoli p- crust pizza. Does that count? Am I, is that on the Weight Watchers, the keto? Oh, God. Oh, that's the burp being like, you ate like a pound of cheese and you thought you were going to get away with this? Are you stupid? You you must be stupid if you think you could eat a pound of cheese and not expect your bowels to be like, no, don't do that. Don't have a pound of cheese on your pizza, but it's so good. Yeah, you're going to put the cheese on top of the pizza. Call back to the last episode. Yeah, well then what are you going to do? Win a melted oven? Oh, fuck. Dude. I got a car. I got a motherfucking car. No CarMax for this bullshit. We don't even... I didn't even need to mention them to know that we did not go to them. Shout out to CarMax. They fucking suck. Um, They're not as... Ba- they're, they're pretty bad, but the car dealership uh, gave me a fucking headache. Okay, I'm going to be honest because I'm not being upfront with you guys. My credit sucks, dick. Oh, my God. Shocker. A kid who's about to turn 30 and has a bad credit score and wants to be a comedian and an actor? Oh, tell me something we don't know, right? We go to the dealership. Uh, My mom co-signed it. Shout out to my mom. She's got a better credit score. Uh, And you know what? They said a lot of things that they didn't actually keep. They straight up lied to me. And I don't like liars. I'm in L.A., don't need any more fake people. I don't. I don't need any more fake fucking people in my life. But okay, car salesman people. The first guy who took care of me before I head to this dealership at the end was a Toyota. I wanted the Toyota hybrid, the Corolla hybrid. I thought that'd be a good one to lease. I lease. I don't own. I don't got that kind of money. So I want to lease this Corolla. This guy, my salesman, his name tag I'm staring at, it says Luis. And I'm like, his name's Luis. And as he introduces him, when I call, when I get to the place, he goes, yeah, ask for a Harley. And I go, uh, Harley? And he's like, yeah, that's me. And then I'm like, mm, says Luis. But I don't say anything the entire time. I wait till he gets me through. He just keeps bringing up Harley Davidson's a lot. Like, he's like, I drive a motorcycle, you know? Because that's what motorcycle guys do. They have to bring it up. Like, And it's not the guy you think that drives a motorcycle. I'm not talking about fucking looks like the lead singer of Leonard Skinner or whatever bullshit. It doesn't look like a Hells Angels guy. He's selling me a car. He's not covered in tats. He doesn't have a freaking, you know, a beard down to his legs and also like has like like uh, eat me written on his knuckles. No, this guy was clean cut Luis, but he goes by Harley because he drives a Harley Davidson. Oh, could it get any greasier and gross? You know what's funny? At first, it didn't bother me. And then I got home and I said to my girlfriend, I go, yeah, my sales associate, his name is Harley. She's like, what? And I'm like, because he drives a motorcycle. And she's like, "Ugh, that's gross. It's one thing that you're a car salesman, but the fact that you call yourself Harley because there's too many Luises, so you name yourself after the motorcycle... That would be like if there were too many Brads and I called myself cheese because I eat too much fucking cheese. I don't know. I don't have a thing. It's just fucking weird, dude. Harley is a creepy name. Could you imagine meeting a guy named Harley who wasn't named Harley originally, but that was the first choice he went with for a cool nickname? You ever met the kid with the You ever met the kid in like like elementary school? His name was like Richard. He's like, but you can call me Blaze. No, I won't. No, I will not. Because Blaze is just as weird as Richard. Richard at least is formal. Blaze makes it sound... Blaze is somebody who's trying to sound like he kills people, but at the end of the day, he probably rides like a moped. 
It's like, my name's Blaze, and I'm late to my work. I'm late to my job. <laughs> I'm late to my work. I'm late to my job at the hipster coffee poetry slam cafe. That's where that's where Blaze works. Blaze does definitely definitely does not work at a cool biker bar where everyone's getting their ass kicked and slamming whiskey shots. No, Blaze has to count to 4.2 seconds to make sure the espresso shots are pulled correctly. That's a Blaze for you. Blaze is no longer a cool name. I hate to say it. You're either, you're Blaze. If you're a dude and your name is Blaze, uh, you definitely. <laughs> Are a hairstylist, and there's nothing wrong with that, but you definitely wear a vest. Do you get what I'm saying? It's like my name's Blaze. Let me cut your hair. There's a character right there. Did someone give me an espresso shot, Blaze. If it's a chick, hot as fuck. You can't be a Blaze and be ugly. I just don't think that's possible. If your name is Blaze and you're a woman, you're probably hot. Just saying, something to think about. Anyways. Harley was not doing a very good job of keeping me at the at the local Toyota dealership. I made my way over to a Kia, and that's all they're getting. I'm not going to say where. You can figure it out. I posted the picture. I think it's on there. Fuck them, those inconsiderate jerk-offs. Tell me. They're like, get my mom on the phone. We got the, the price we want. We're doing good. And they're like, yeah, we'll send it out this weekend. They don't send it out till Tuesday. My mom lives in Florida. Doesn't get the paperwork till Thursday. She has the job. Paperwork doesn't go out until the following Friday. Now I am a week without a car. They refuse to let me take the car off the lot. They don't even want to give me a rental. They're fighting me on it. They're like, I don't know what the problem is, Brad. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'm waiting for this paperwork to hit you because you lied and said you sent it right away and you waited two days. Fuck you. This is not my problem. I gave you money. I put down the first month and now I don't even have it for a week of that month. Fuck you, dude. Don't make me go down a... Don't make me go down to Toyota so I could deal with Harley Blaze Davidson over there. He's just like trying to sell me a fucking motorcycle while I'm trying to buy a fucking hybrid Toyota. And this guy goes, you know, they're going to make a hybrid motorcycle. Really, dude? I'm not going green for that. And I'm not going to kill myself. If you drove a miter, if you drove, oh God, it's been a long day. If you drive a motorcycle and you go by Harley, I hope you get hit by another car. That's all I'm saying. Nothing against him personally, just the choices he make with his name. It's just so annoying and gross and greasy. You don't get greasier than naming yourself after a fucking motorcycle because there's too many Luises. I probably shouldn't say his actual name, but here we are. <laughs> he was a nice guy. I just think he made poor choices and nicknames. That's all. Got the car, though. After all the shit, I got the car. It's been a long weekend. I just got back from Albuquerque. I didn't think I did that in the right key. Albuquerque. And if you don't know where that's from, you didn't have a good childhood like me. That's Weird Al. That is the only reason I knew what Albuquerque was before I met my girlfriend. Um, well, I passed the parents' test. I passed. After all this time, didn't think I was going to pass, but a passed. I got a nice, fat, probably like a B plus, A minus, possibly. I killed it with the dog. I got a fucking extra credit with that dog. That dog misses me. I miss that dog. I feel like that dog is my, you know, my long lost son. I literally felt bad leaving it. That's how much I want a dog. Yeah, we went to Albuquerque. We drove a long ass drive. And the wind was picking the car up. This Nissan Sentra was getting basically, I had two hands on the wheel. If I wanted to get the coffee, well, it was either die or or have a sip of my red eye. I'm going to be honest, the red eye was a little more tempting than living. That's how much I love coffee. And I'm like, hmm, you're talking about a fresh cup of Joe or possibly sacrificing my life? Hmm. Mm, ah, safety's we safety is so lame. Give me that cup of Joe. Give me a slice of life. I need that cat. I need coffee to live. I'm so tired. This is a poor choice to do a podcast, but I'm already late. This should have came out already. But here we are. Albuquerque. They love their green chili because there's nothing else there. Uh, I'm gonna say it. Uh, it's very pretty at times. Albuquerque, a lot of great farmland, a lot of uh, bunnies and coyotes and uh, wildlife and fresh, fresh vegetables. Great. 
you guys are obsessed. You know you have nothing going on for your state of New Mexico when your like pride and joy is a pepper. You heard me. A green chili pepper. That is the reason to go to Albuquerque is to have some fine green chili. Mm, mm, mm. Find something good about your state. You can't. It's impossible. If green chili is the only reason people knew your state before Breaking Bad, that means that your two major exports are peppers and meth. Where do we fall on the on the state level? Like as far as top state, you're definitely in the bottom fifty. Two. 52, 50, holy shit, I'm not gonna about to, I'm about to blow my cover, is it 50 states or 52, sometimes I forget, it's been a while since I've been into elementary school, as I'm slurring words and getting things wrong, green chili, and listen, very tasty, green chili is a very tasty pepper, however, dude, that is no reason to go somewhere, I'm not getting on a plane or driving. I drove 14 hours to meet her parents. I didn't go there to get green chili. However, when she was trying to give me a tour, she's like, this used to be an abandoned meth lab, and this is where I used to go do this, and this is abandoned meth lab, and this is... Everything ended with meth. If it isn't, If it didn't start with meth, it started with green chili and then ended with meth every single time. The cuisine, not bad, very cheap. You're like, damn, I can get a beer for $4, and it's a good beer. And then you look outside your window, and you're like, but I'm in Albuquerque. Albuquerque, I feel like I'm going to get my my throat slit next time I go to Albuquerque, but don't worry. I got myself a knife with my name engraved on it because I'm trashier. Call me trash. Call me Harley because I got a knife with my name on it now. That's how trashy I am. Dude. I felt so cool buying a knife. I was like, I'm walking around this place that guns are pretty much okay. No one's wearing a mask. I was like, fuck it. I'm going to get a knife. Because I saw so many knives, and I'm like, I don't own a knife. My girlfriend's got a lot of knives. Don't ask me why. But she did grow up in Albuquerque, and uh, I'm going to be honest with you, not a great track record in that fucking city. We saw one dead body, and then this is the best. We're like, she's giving me a tour of her college, UNM. Beautiful college, by the way. I will say that's one of the nicer things about Albuquerque is they take care of that college. It is very nice. And I'm not downplaying it. You know, guys, no. I don't give compliments that easy. That shit was nice. It was way nicer than my school. But we're driving around Greek Row because I'm a douche. And I'm like, let me see your fucking frat houses. Let me see your frat houses. Can I see your frat house? And I just started getting having a stroke. I'm like, can I see your frat house, dude? Can I see it? Can I see your frat house? So we go to Greek Row, and then we just see this shirtless fat kid, very overweight kid. Whew. Let's just say he ate more than the green chili. A lot of burritos in that kid's diet. He's sm- shirtless, smiling, laughing, and bleeding from the nose. Uh, I mean, I've laughed a lot by myself, but if I was bleeding and shirtless... It's not because I heard a funny joke. Does that make sense, everybody? He was bleeding shirtless and laughing out loud. (sighs) I don't want to point any fingers at any type of drug, but let's just say it may or may not be the major export next to green chili peppers. The kid definitely had to be methed out. And the guy who was dead on the ground by the train station, definitely from meth or something on on the other, maybe a bad batch. I don't watch Breaking Bad. I don't know how it all works. Is that why you guys all watch Breaking Bad? So you can learn how to make meth? Go to CVS and buy some Sudafed. I'm not telling you to go make meth. I'm just saying I heard that's how it's done. I don't want this to be traced back being like, and Brad Stoll found overdosed on meth. First of all, don't like drugs. They're, they're, they freak me the fuck out. Pills, I don't like taking them. I don't even like taking Tylenol, but I do it if I'm in that much pain. I need to be in a lot of pain to want to take a Tylenol. I bought a knife with my name on it. What? A, first of all, that has to be the least intimidating knife to pull on a person, right? Being like, hey, give me all your money. And they're like, okay, so I already know your name? Like, uh, I'm not giving all my money to a guy named Kevin. Y- you're definitely not a guy who robs people if your name is Kevin. You're a dude who is a tourist somewhere, bought yourself a knife. You're like, well, I'll never lose it now. 
because it's got my name on it, and I see another person holding it, I'm not going to – There's. it's only so often you meet another Kevin. Eh, there's a lot of Kevins. That's a pretty <laughs> – it's a pretty common name. Ugh. She's like, oh, let me show you downtown. That was depressing. I literally thought I was in the movie Rent, but it was in New Mexico. And uh, everyone could definitely afford to pay their rent, but they just decided not to. They're like, well, meth is just tastes better than paying my rent. So it was just sad. Everything was closed down. I thought I was in like just a, like a soup kitchen ad being like... <laughs> For just 10 cents a day, you could reopen an Albuquerque business. Dude, we walked into a restaurant, which was very good. Frontier, shout out. Great burritos, breakfast burritos. Lived up to the height. We had a cinnamon roll. I can't feel my heart still. It was fantastic. Dude, the ad for to get employees, they go, we're starting at $12 an hour. I'm like, $12 an hour? Whew, I thought 15 was not high enough. $12? And I look at my girlfriend, I go, $12? She goes, you can live off $12 an hour here in Albuquerque. What? Well, you certainly can't keep a business open with that fucking cheap of labor. That clearly means they're not doing that well. But when she, it was funny. When we walked by a restaurant. She goes, ooh, that's expensive. And I looked at the menu. I'm like, what are you talking about? All entrees are under 15 bucks. She goes, this is expensive for Albuquerque. And I'm like, I forgot we're speaking a third world language here when it comes to Albuquerque being like, ooh, shall we eat at the finest steakhouse? It's only going to cost us $40. And I meant the whole bill. Oh, my God. I'm so gassy. I'm so gassy. You know what was gassier when I saw this? We were walking around a mall because I have to go to malls when I'm in other places. Um, I really do. I love malls. I love a good mall. I enjoy a good mall. And uh, we walked by the stand, and it's called Astro Cup. And I was like, what is this shit? It was a food stand. We got closer. Ready for this? It's a smoothie. With a plastic top that goes around the cup, filled with snacks. Not like, ooh, nuts and like, uh, you know, um, nuts and, you know, trail mix. Something that's like moderately healthy for a bad snack. No, dude. There were fucking cinnamon rolls and brownie bites in this little plastic UFO that went around the giant 30-ounce smoothie that you don't need. Are you fucking kidding me? What's the business model here? Hey, do you want to die tomorrow? Well, why don't you come and fly to why don't you fly to heaven with this Astro Cup? Because when you finish this cup, you'll be sure as shit pull down on a stretcher and not be in Albuquerque. Hopefully, after that, you'll definitely be dead. An Astro Cup. Jesus Christ! What are we doing, people? Like, I feel like we're just trying to outfat each other as time goes on, right? Oh my god, so much fucking cheese. And it's hot as fuck in my apartment. Dude, an Astro Cup? What? Why are you drinking and eating that? What? Who's sitting there drinking a smoothie going, you know what this could go with? Do, do, do you know what goes well with the smoothie? Uh, the, sound, <laughs> the sound of the fucking monitor going off when I'm in the hospital. That's what. Dude, are you trying to get people to saw their legs off as as they're drinking a moderately healthy beverage? You know what this you know what this strawberry banana protein smoothie needs? Just fucking uh, a fucking saw out saw out my fucking intestines and all that shit. Everything. Astro Cup. I ah, dude, I can't even wrap my I saw it and I laughed. I go, no way. And I literally saw someone walk away from the stand. With an Astro Cup, with a smoothie, and brownies, and all that bullshit. And I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> We're doomed. We're doomed. At that point, if you have an Astro Cup, just don't even wear a mask, because it doesn't even matter anymore. I think health is coming for you before the fucking virus. That's for sure. I don't know, man. Albuquerque was a place. When people are like, oh, how was that? I'm like, it was a place. Uh, listen, amazing hospitality. Her parents are fantastic. I had a great time. I got to spend time with my lady. Now I'm on vacation from my girlfriend. So that means I'm just going to sleep alone and possibly rub myself to sleep. Uh, you didn't hear that, but here, it, I, I said it. Whatever. Fuck it, dude. It's so hot. I'm wearing a robe. It's fucking 90 degrees in this apartment because I don't want the AC blaring as I'm recording my podcast. God, I'm such a loser. <laughs> 
<laughs> Turn off the AC. I'm recording my thoughts. This is like the equivalent of writing your diary and someone standing over you and being like, what are you doing? Be like, go away. This is everything I believe in and I feel. Except I'm putting it on the internet for everyone to see. I almost had Whataburger. I almost did. I saw one down the street from my girlfriend's house. I'm like, oh, it's going down. It didn't have enough time. We didn't. But man, people are eating me alive in the comments section of that In-N-Out fucking burger video that I made. And honestly, it wasn't that accurate on purpose. None of my videos are supposed to be that accurate. It's supposed to just be funny and out there. I shot on their health care. Apparently, they're one of the highest paid fast food workers out there. All right, go fuck yourself, dude. Who cares? In-N-Out is overrated. It is overrated. It is it tasty? Sure. Is it good for the price? You betcha. Is it fantastic? No. It's fine. It does the trick. As I say from things that don't impress me. It does the trick. Am I going to wait three hours in line in a car full of people? No. Absolutely fucking lutely not. You know what I'd rather do? Make a burger at that point. I'd rather just make a burger. I'm not a burger guy. But I've heard water burger. Dude, I heard that shit is like doughy fucking bread. The burger's plain and meh. Dude, it heard it looked like shit. I saw one sandwich. It was like a, a barbecue chicken melt sandwich. It looked like fucking two shitty chicken fingers shoved between a grilled cheese. I'm like, what? Did a fifth grader make this menu? What is this? Even for fast food, I'm like, all right, guys. Like, even Jack in the Box makes their munchy menu separate. But when you sell that as, like, your main item, who's the CEO? Who? Someone who literally had a stroke before they saw what a food menu looked like? Uh, I'm going to put a grilled cheese in between two chicken fingers. Are the chicken fingers going to be covered in sauce? No, just a drizzle. What? Figure it out, Whataburger. Hey, in and out. You're overrated. <sighs> I flew for the first time, though, on the way back home from Kirky. Kirk? The big Kirk? Do people say that? They should. I was flew back from Kirk, you know? I was flew back from Kirk. Uh, shout out to American Airlines for nearly fucking my night last night. That was bullshit. Ugh, I came in at 8.30. I could have gotten out at 5.30. I could have flew into Burbank, but I flew into LAX instead because you fucking screwed all of us. Everyone was talking about it like it was news. I sat next to this other couple. They were talking about it. Didn't even know we were on the same plane, but apparently we were. But you know what's worse is small talk on airlines. I found that out very fast. And I wasn't even... Oh, my God. (sighs) Guys, I'm so... I'm not sorry because I'm trying to get you content in time and I'm already late. But I'm so exhausted. This episode is going to end earlier than it should. But I'll say this. I'm going to do, talk a little bit more of this plane. One question from unsolicited, and then we're going to go to go to sleep somehow. Because I'm just too tired for this shit. And I shouldn't be. I should be fucking energetic. I'm excited to see you guys. This guy walks in, and he has a fucking bag of, you guessed it, green chili items. And he's like, you guys hungry? You hungry? You hungry? First of all, stop trying to act like a chaperone on a fucking elementary school field trip. Stop offering people food. Okay. Stop trying to make people your friend before I realize you're going to... You know what the thing is? If someone is offering you food and you've never even spoken or met them before, immediately on airline, get ready for the next thing to fall out of their mouth because that's almost like their whole, like, you're going to hate me, so I'm going to offer you food to make you forget about what's about to go down. This guy was everything. Uh, Ex-army guy. uh, Probably works for one of those contract uh, uh, army things where they're like... I don't know what they're called, but like they're hired by the government. They're like hired, you know, shooters or whatever. This guy was just going five miles a minute about nothing. Talking about masks. He goes, hey, man, look at us. You know, look at us, man. Look at these masks. Don't you feel like we're in the twilight zone? No, dickhead. It's been over a year. I'm used to it. Get over yourself. You know, we're on the plane. You bought the ticket. You knew it was going to happen. Did you think someone's going to go, you know what, sir? Just because you complained about it like everyone else does on airplanes, you don't have to wear a mask. No. No. It's not a seatbelt, buddy. Put it on your face. Okay? No one cares about your smelly green chili stew that you're offering the whole fucking row like we're going to forget that you're about to go on this rant. 
And this is this is how we know this guy was out of his fucking mind. Okay, this is progressive Brad here, right? The stewardess walks down the aisle, passes you know army fucking GI dumbass. He fucking does one of these. He does like the whole turn around, like really obnoxious, like turn around to check out her ass. And he goes, I like her to take care of me to the guy across from him. Are you fucking, are you a cartoon, bro? I I wish you could take care of me. Ew, dude. And then he goes like this, because everyone's not giving him his validation. He goes, it's like, why are we allowed to say that anymore? Oh, I don't know, dude. I don't think we are ever allowed to say that. But whatever fucking caca world you... Caca, Jesus Christ. What, did I, what am I, 60 years old? Whatever caca that just came out of your mouth. Dude. Why can we say that? Why? I mean, dude, why? Because you sound like you like men. You don't sound like you like women. Because no one legitimately says that out loud. That guy definitely sucks cock. And you know what? I hope he does, and I'd be proud of him if he did. But stop lying to yourself, dude. Nobody turns around obnoxiously and be like, oh, man, I love her to take care of me. He wasn't even an old guy. You know, it would be more acceptable if it was an older man, like a grandpa, be like, I like her to take care of me. And he whispers to me, and I'd be like, ha ha, you dirty old man. This guy was in his 30s, was in the army, married from what I heard in the conversation. And he just goes, I like her to take care of me. No, dude, you want a dude to fucking pound your butt. That's what you want. You want to go down to Pound Town. And hey, we're all proud of you if you do. Just stop coming up with this bullshit of like, yeah, I'd like her tits in my uh, uh, arms. Nope. Nope. See you at West Hollywood Boulevard. You're going down straight down a one-way ticket. You know what? He had to actually, he came to Phoenix because he had to do a layover before he went down to Pound Town, baby. That guy was so gay, dude. <laughs> like her to take care of me. <sighs> no, no, you wouldn't. You would not. You know what you want to do? Gossip with her and get to know her and talk about your feelings. And there's nothing wrong with those things. Again, you're just lying to yourself. And stop it with the mass shit. Dude, there were... Okay, so you know how like if you have Spotify like free, like me, you get a bunch of ads? Well, I didn't pay that low of a price to take this plane ride back to LA for them to do three ad reads on a 35-minute plane ride. Three for a fucking airline credit card. Are you shitting me? If I'm sitting here listening to a bunch of fucking stupid ads and they're like, I, I wish they could be like, you know, they're just like, uh, click here for 30 minutes of ad-free music. I wish they're like, open the emergency exit and take one of the fucking stewardess out so you don't have to hear a credit card thing ever again. Oh my God, dude. That was atrocious. That was so bad. Three reads, and they kept interrupting everybody. He was trying to just, me, I was trying to watch a movie I've seen a hundred times, so I didn't have to hear her stupid voice. But she's like, guys, if you sign up now, nobody on this plane has the credit score for your card. They all max out their card to take this stupid flight, okay? Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Okay. I'm running out of fuel, but I'm going to end it on this one thing of my favorite section. And we have one question. Thank God we have time for it. This is unsolicited advice. And this is going to be a great one. What's your thoughts on life coaches? <laughs> oh, I love a question like this. Here's my thing. Nobody here has the answers. I don't have the answers. That's why this is unsolicited. And I'm just telling you what I know. There's no such thing as a person who can coach you through life. Because guess what? Their life, equally miserable. Maybe not as toxic, or maybe as toxic. Nobody is a life coach. Just like there aren't... That's that's why like like motivational speakers are motivational because they know how to... Be, like they know how to be confident in front of a crowd. They know how to make you feel good. A life coach doesn't give a shit about you. They care about their story and not yours. They hear your story and then they make it about themselves. That's a life coach. Okay? I know people who are life coaches that weren't even out of fucking college yet. I'm sorry. What part of life did you experience? Unless you have some crazy Oprah Winfrey sob story that you would tell on a fucking talk show. Uh, no, you're not a life coach. There's no coach to life. 
Surround yourself with great people who don't make you feel like utter shit. Take care of yourself. And that's it. That's the key to life. Don't be an asshole. Be around nice people who are, well, not nice people. Nice people are annoying. Like Be around good people that you make them feel good and they make you feel good. You jerk each other off. You know, you make yourself feel good. Mm, yeah. Have some delicious food. Feel good. Take care of yourself. Make good decisions. There is no life coach. I can't even tell you how to live your life. What the fuck am I qualified for? There's no college that lets you get a life coach degree. You know why? Because it's not a real profession. It's a fucking pyramid scheme. Now get your other friends to come to me. And I'll tell you all about it. It's not real therapy if they don't actually give a shit or they're qualified to tell you what to do. You know? A therapist is qualified to tell you to do. A life coach probably blacked out the night before and texted her ex or his ex. Okay? It's a stupid idea. If you're a life coach and you're listening, I'm here to tell you. This guy in a robe who's bald thinks you're full of shit. Okay? I think that's enough for me because I'm literally getting very tired. If you like the pod, which I know you do, we're on Spotify and YouTube. Subscribe to both. Hopefully we're on iTunes eventually. We'll figure that out at some point. Uh, Follow me on all the social medias. Join the Patreon if you can. Any help is appreciated. I love you guys. Bye.